Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining me today to learn about life in Oklahoma. This 15 minute presentation will cover some aspects of what you can expect if you are moving to Oklahoma this year. Please feel free to pause the presentation at any time if you would like to take a screenshot or write down any information. Also, please note, this presentation will be available on our YouTube and CAF Connection websites. Please keep an eye out for the I wish I knew points. These points have been gathered from fellow Canadians after settling into Oklahoma in the hopes of easing the transition by avoiding surprises and having realistic expectations for newcomers. I hope you are excited about this posting opportunity as there are so many things to do and see here. So let's get started. The state of Oklahoma. The population of Oklahoma is 3.9 million. It received admission to statehood in 1907, making it America's 46th state. Oklahoma is located in the Midwest region of the USA. Oklahoma City being located in the central region within the state. It contains 10 distinct ecological regions and contains terrain and ecosystems from arid plains to subtropical forests and mountains. It has over 200 man-made lakes encompassing over 1 million surface acres of water and has red dirt, much like that found in our own Prince Edward Island. Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, often referred to as OKC, is the capital city and the largest city in the state. It has a population of 1.39 million in the greater OKC region with a median age of 34. The primary language throughout the state is English with 87% of those living in the OKC area only speaking English. There is a small percentage of the population who speaks Spanish, but French is quite uncommon. Key industries include aviation and aerospace, biotechnology, and energy. OKC is a large urban area that is vast and quite spread out. It contains numerous smaller cities within the greater Oklahoma City region. For example, Tinker Air Force Base, or Tinker AFB, is located southeast of the city, closer to Midwest City. There are 42 Canadian members and their families who we lovingly refer to as Canokies, or Canadians in Oklahoma, living within the metro area and are posted to Tinker. This makes our Kenoki community approximately 100 strong in any given year. We have a great dynamic of single members, couples, empty nesters, and families with children. I wish I knew point number one. I wish I knew where other Canadian families lived before choosing my home. Most of our single members choose to live right in Oklahoma City, many of which in the downtown region. Typically, this covers approximately 38% of our overall community. Most couples and families choose to live in the surrounding suburbs. Typically, 55% of this overall community choose to live in Edmond, while the majority of the others choose Moore or Norman area, and a few choosing to live in further out communities such as Newcastle or Choctaw. Some things to consider when choosing where to live may include where other families in your demographic live. This is helpful when it comes to childcare, support during deployments, having someone to help out with your pets, or check in on your house if you are away. Some others may choose to live based on where community gatherings and social activities are more prevalent. Many families cho choose where to live based on the schooling that is available in the area. No matter whether you choose to live in Edmond or the Moore area, please know that the drive to base is mostly interstate driving and may take anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes depending on traffic, time of day, and how close you live to the interstate. There is so much to see and do in Oklahoma, both within the metro and beyond. A few examples include the Western Heritage Museum, which is just one of 14 major museums, the famous Route 66, the Oklahoma Zoo, Science Museum Oklahoma, 
the OKC Ballet, the Philharmonic, many of our professional sports teams, which include NBA's OKC Thunder, the USA Olympic Rowing Training Facility, located in our Boathouse District, as well as many state festivals, events, parks, playgrounds, hiking trails, and so much more. Tinker Air Force Base, or Tinker AFB, was built in 1941. It is the largest single-site employer in the state with over 26,000 military and civilian employees. It is the largest military air depot in the U.S. It is a major maintenance and deployment facility for the Navy and the Air Force. The base has an Airman and Family Readiness Center, or a and FRC, which is similar to a Canadian MFRC. They provide service such as family life counselors, school liaison officer, and so much more. The base also boasts a large retail facility, which includes an exchange, similar to Arcanix, a commissary, which is a grocery store, plus a food court, bank, dry cleaners, and more. The base also has a large medical treatment facility, which is a large clinic, not a military hospital. They provide all medical services to military members, but family members may also use the clinic. They even have a women's health and pediatrics unit. All medical services off the base will be billed through Allianz Global Assistance, including referrals from the base. Dental services on base are for military members only. Dependents must seek treatment on the economy and bill for service through Canada Life. A great choice is for all family members and members to use the pharmacy on base for filling of prescriptions. The base also hosts lots of recreational and leisure activities, including the Information Travel and Tickets, or ITT, which is a great place to book your next vacation, a library, bowling alley, golf course, and much more. The Canadian Detachment Tinker, which is located at Tinker AFB, is part of the 552nd Air Control Wing under the NORAD or North American Aerospace Defense Command. It has been a valued part of Tinker since 1979. Members posted here fly on the E3 Century aircraft, commonly known as the AWACS, or the Airborne Warning and Control System, and they fly alongside our American partners. There are typically 42 Canadian members posted to Tinker along with their families. The detachment, being part of the larger air control wing, maintains a very busy operational tempo and a robust deployment cycle. Some of our main national OCAN challenges include the following. These seem to be the same no matter what area you go in, but in some places, some may be a little more prevalent. As with any new posting, a posting outside of the country may pose a number of challenges, but please remember, these are challenges, not outright obstacles. Some main challenges include birth of dependents, childcare, education and schooling, employment, finances, healthcare navigation, and taxes. We're gonna to touch on a few that are key things to think about when coming to Oklahoma. When it comes to education and schooling, if you are moving with a young child who is going to be starting kindergarten, enrollment age for kindergarten in Oklahoma is five years on or before September 1. This is quite different than in Canada, where a child can enroll in kindergarten if their birthday goes through to December 31. Luckily, many families have been successful in enrolling their child in a private school for kindergarten if they have that child born between September 1 and December 31. Another key note for Oklahoma is on employment. I wish I knew point number two. Families coming to Oklahoma should be aware that the employment authorization process or EAD process can sometimes take longer than hoped and it can vary from every individual. Of great importance for families who plan to work, it is important to note that the EAD lasts for three years while the average posting to Tinker is four years. 
This does mean the family members would have to renew their EAD for their fourth or any subsequent years. Although typically this happens without too much trouble, just be aware it sometimes takes a little longer than expected and has led to a headache or two. Healthcare navigation. Healthcare can be a touchy topic for some while on OCAN. The billing process can be a source of frustration and it can be quite time consuming. I wish I knew point number three. I wish I knew the medical insurance process could be so time consuming and tedious. While the level of medical care available here is quite fantastic at times, it can take time and perseverance to get through all the paperwork for insurance. Being able to do this will help avoid out-of-pocket expenses and stressful situations. The good news is that we do have a dedicated medical liaison team in Washington to help assist us, and all of this will be explained in further detail upon your arrival in location. When it comes to all of these challenges, please know MFSUS is here to assist you in your journey. Please take some time to check out our CAF Connection website. Oklahoma has its own page, plus there is a series of FAQs which cover these and more important topics. Some differences from Canada. Some of the major things you can expect to see if you move from Canada to Oklahoma include state gun laws. Oklahoma is a very pro-gun ownership state and it is a concealed or open carry state. As of 2019, Oklahoma does not require a permit for any person 21 years or older to legally carry a concealed or open firearm in public. Dangerous and poisonous animals must be discussed when we talk about Oklahoma. Oklahoma is home to seven venomous state snakes, two dangerous spiders, the brown recluse and the black widow, and a variety of species of scorpions. Luckily, preventative pest control is common and quite acceptable. Driving. I wish I knew point number four. I wish I knew that driving in and around the city could be so stressful. Even for many experienced city drivers, it takes some time to become accustomed to interstate and turnpike driving. Unfortunately, because the metro area has a lack of public transportation, driving does become a priority. It is important to note that the school year here in Oklahoma runs from mid-August through the end of May, which is a little different than we're used to in Canada, where it starts in September and runs through the end of June. Allergies are another key topic. Seasonal allergies or hay fever can be a real nuisance in Oklahoma, even for some of those who have never experienced them before. This can also be true for many of our pets. I wish I knew point number five. Families with children who have food allergies should be aware that peanut-free schools do not really exist in Oklahoma. Although they make some alternate arrangements within cafeterias, it is quite different than what we are used to in Canada. Military presence. There is a huge military presence around Oklahoma City and throughout the state. Tinker AFB is equivalent to a small city as it boasts over 26,000 employees. There is a strong pride in and support for the military. Military discounts are common and it doesn't matter that you're Canadian. It is also not uncommon to have a purchase paid for while you're in uniform or get a salute and handshake while being thanked for your service. You may find this coincides very nicely with the already great Southern hospitality you may find here. Climate and weather. Oklahoma is typically a windy, sunny, and relatively dry location. I wish I knew point number six. I wish I knew the climate was so dry. It can certainly be an issue for those who have a history of skin conditions and or migraines that are triggered by dry weather. The summers in Oklahoma are hot and humid. Average temperatures show it is 32 degrees or 90 degrees Fahrenheit on at least 70 days of the year and 38 degrees or 100 degrees Fahrenheit on 10 or more days. 
Luckily for us, most subdivisions have a community pool, which is a very popular choice when not hiding indoors with the air conditioning. Winters here are relatively mild. They are usually above freezing temperatures with little to no snow. However, in some years, there will be a snow accumulation and ice storms definitely are not uncommon. The good news is that the bad weather typically does not last too long. Fall is typically a beautiful season with warm temperatures and moderate conditions. Spring, well, spring in Oklahoma starts early, but it's kind of the wild season. In spring, Oklahoma City lies in a zone of frequent conflict between warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico and cold, dry air from our own beloved Canada. This dry line often spawns strong to severe thunderstorms, large hail, and tornadoes, with May typically being the most active month. Flash flooding is another real possibility in the spring. All this said, and tornadoes aside, if you ask most Canadians living in Oklahoma, they really do enjoy the weather here. It is a real nice change from our harsh Canadian winters. Natural disasters. We would be remiss to talk about Oklahoma and not talk about some tornadoes. Oklahoma is in the center of what is referred to as Tornado Alley. It is prone to frequent and often severe tornadoes. Spring is the busiest time frame, with April and May being the busiest of the months. However, tornadoes can and do occur in every month of the year, so it is best to always be prepared. Tornadoes are real and can be very scary, but knowledge and preparation are the key to staying safe. Oklahoma has tornado sirens located throughout the state, and they are activated when the National Weather Service, located in Norman, has issued a tornado warning. There are 182 sirens located throughout the OKC area. These sirens are tested every Saturday at noon unless there's a real possible tornado threat. Storm shelters or tornado shelters are common in most of the homes. They are generally located in the floor of the garage and are an underground bunker to keep you, your family and your pets safe. If the house you are interested in renting does not have a shelter, please do not be afraid to negotiate this during your house hunting. Up-to-date weather alerts, watches, and warnings are all available from local weather apps, and we recommend you download some. Military Family Services US. We attempt to have consistent MFS baseline services for every single family living in the US. We do that by talking about what our baseline services are with people and we've listed them here. While you are posted to the US, our goal as military family services is to provide you and your family with the support and information we have to help make this posting the absolute best it can be. We hope to ease the transition between Canada and the US and help you settle and thrive within your new community. Our programs and services are developed or identified within the community to meet the needs of our CAF families posted to the US. If there is something we can do to help ease your transition, please let us know. Here is the local Military Family Services Coordinator or MFSC's contact information. They can help with questions you may have and provide the information needed to help you and your family with your move to Oklahoma. Once you have your posting message, please contact the MFSC and they will be happy to add you to the secret Facebook group and our local email distribution list so that you will start receiving our news, programs, and local information. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch today. We hope that this helps you prepare for your move to Oklahoma. The city has so much to offer and is a wonderful posting opportunity. You will also discover that we have a strong and supportive Canadian community, and we are so looking forward to welcoming you and your family. Have a great day.